What's up, YouTube Revolution? Zomfected Gaming 349 at your fingertips. So today I'm going to be reviewing the final episode ever to the Walking Dead main mothership series. Spoiler warning if you're not caught up, but if you don't care about spoilers, here we go. What a thrill ride this series has been. Alright, so the series finale episode picks up right after the end of Season 11, Episode 23, when the Commonwealth Army were battling our survivors, and when Judith Grimes gets shot by the Commonwealth Governor Pamela Milton, and Daryl is desperately trying to save her life by bringing her to the nearest Commonwealth Hospital, and a horde of walkers has breached the city of the Commonwealth. While Daryl is trying to get Judith to the hospital, our survivors buy Daryl some time while fighting the horde, but one of our survivors gets devoured, which is Jules, and Luke gets bitten on the leg. The action in this opening scene is just so intense, I was actually shaking. And so eventually Daryl gets into the hospital, but a bunch of Commonwealth soldiers come in and knock Daryl out cold. And Judith is just laying there on the hospital gurney with a gunshot wound and notices the walker horde coming towards the hospital while Daryl is knocked out. And she does her best to barricade the door and she actually buys both her and Daryl some time. But she loses so much blood and just falls over right near Daryl. I applaud Judith for this bravery because she doesn't just save herself but also saves Daryl from the walker horde. But eventually Daryl wakes up in a hospital room with Carol and Judith but Judith is unconscious and Luke is also in the room as well with Connie, Magna, Yumiko and Kelly and by the looks of it they chopped off Luke's leg to stop the infection from spreading. But bad news, there's no doctors left in the hospital because selfish governor Pamela Milton made all the doctors leave and go to the rich parts of the commonwealth because it's all about protecting the rich and letting the lower class districts of the commonwealth fend for themselves. So what ends up happening is Luke ends up bleeding out and Connie, Magna and Yumiko and Kelly have to put him down before he turns. And the emotional reactions they give is so well acted, I actually felt teary-eyed in this moment since Connie, Magna, Yumiko, and Kelly, and Luke were all best friends before they joined our survivors group back in Season 9. They all knew each other for years in this apocalypse, so it's like losing a family member and this series is all about family sacrificing for each other. But also more bad news, Judith is about to lose too much blood and what Daryl does is he decides to donate his blood to her, which is a callback to Rick doing this for Carl way back in season 2 when Carl was shot. But elsewhere in the commonwealth, Commander Mercer is busted out of prison and rallies up as many commonwealth troopers who are loyal to him to take the fight to Pamela and other commonwealth troopers who are loyal to her. And then we pick up with Rosita looking for her baby daughter Coco with Father Gabriel and Eugene. Rosita fights the walkers and rescues her baby Coco and Coco is safe, no bites at all. We pick back up with Daryl and the rest of the group escorting an unconscious Judith through the hospital while walkers try to get in the hospital. And we got a walker that picks up a rock and starts banging on the window of the hospital and breaks the window and the hospital is breached and the horde floods in. And Rosita, Coco, Father Gabriel, and Eugene make it to some ambulance, and it doesn't seem to drive, and Rosita drops an F-bomb by saying it's F'd. So they have to leave the ambulance as the walkers are coming, and what they do is climb up a pipe on a building, dying light style. Father Gabriel and Eugene make it in the window, but Rosita is struggling to climb while carrying Coco, and Rosita falls into the walker horde, and my heart dropped. I thought Rosita was dead and she was gonna get what happened to Jules. But Rosita is a warrior and won't go down that easily and she gets right back up smashing the walkers heads in while she is carrying baby Coco to safety and climbs right up on the ambulance and makes a dying light styled parkour jump and makes it in the window safely. So Rosita, Coco, Gabriel, and Eugene, and Max wait out the horde in the building, and Eugene and Rosita have a very heartfelt conversation. Eugene says he can't wait for summer so Coco can eventually go to Oceanside and learn how to swim and Rosita just looks at Eugene with a suspicious look. 
Eugene knows something is not right and he asked what happened when she fell. And it's revealed Rosita was bitten on the back of her left shoulder and Eugene's facial expression is just so emotional. I couldn't hold myself together, I was so sad. The acting in this scene is phenomenal. Eugene breaking down had me so hard to keep it together. I felt like I was a part of the scene about to lose a family member since The Walking Dead is all about family and to be honest, no other movie or show does family better than The Walking Dead. So we get back to Daryl, Carol and Judith and they are safe and sound and Judith wakes up just fine and Daryl says, hey little ass kicker, which is a call back to when Daryl called Judith little ass kicker when she was first born in season 3. And Judith replies back to Daryl saying, Hey, big ass kicker. And Daryl is like, damn straight. Such a cute moment. And we also pick up with the citizens of the Commonwealth who are the poor people trying to climb the gates into the protected and rich neighborhoods. And Pamela is making the troopers shoot anyone on site who tries to climb. This is just messed up and just sick. So eventually we get Mercer and his troopers and a bunch of our survivors in a massive Mexican standoff against Pamela's troopers. And Pamela calls Mercer a traitor and Mercer says no you're the traitor you left thousands of commonwealth citizens to die out there from the walkers and says to Pamela that she shot a child which was Judith. And so eventually it caused the troopers on Pamela's side to have a change of heart and not shoot back at any of the opposing sides because they realize how messed up of a psychopath Pamela is. And so Father Gabriel goes up to the gate and lets all the citizens rioting at the gate in before the horde behind them eats them all up. And Daryl gives this little speech by saying us and the citizens deserve better than this. And Daryl says an awesome line by saying we ain't the walking dead. And so all the survivors including the troopers stand down. And Mercer goes up to Pamela and says you're under arrest for high crimes against the people of this commonwealth. Also we got Maggie and Negan at some vantage point trying to assassinate Pamela and they notice she is getting arrested and Negan says it's a fate worse than death. I almost forgot to mention that Lance Hornsby is a walker in here and uh, Pamela was literally almost was going to kill herself by letting Lance bite her in the face. But Negan and Maggie put a stop to that and killed Walker Lance from letting Pamela kill herself so she can serve a life sentence in jail. But let's move on to the crazy part to where the Commonwealth troopers and our survivors come up with this amazing plan to eradicate the Walker Horde by luring them into Pamela's estates and they blast music to lure them into the area and they got tons of explosives to set up. And eventually when the whole horde is lured in, the massive explosion goes off and this by far is the best explosion I've ever seen in the entirety of the Walking Dead universe like ever. And I mean ever, ever. This is comparable to the nuclear bomb scene from Fear the Walking Dead Season 6. But I gotta say, this explosion was still way better. And even though this was not a nuke at all, this is still better. I think just the cinematography of the way that they've done this um, explosion was just phenomenal. And Pamela Milton gets locked up in jail for the rest of her life. After that, Negan and Maggie have a conversation bringing total closure to the season 7 premiere days of when Negan killed Maggie's husband Glenn. Maggie tells Negan she wants to stop hating Negan, but every time she looks at Negan, she has a memory of Negan's bat Lucille swinging down on Glenn's head, seeing the blood drip down on his face and Negan mocking him while he is dying. Negan's deep guilt and regret is really felt here and I feel really sorry for Negan in this moment. I actually feel sorry for both of them in this moment because both sides had their rights and their wrongs. Negan killed Glenn and Abraham because of punishment for what Rick did to Negan's people at the Savior Outpost back in late season 6 and these were I think close to 50 of Negan's men that Rick had killed. And some of the people Negan may have had could have been innocent people like Glenn and Abraham. Negan decided to kill only two of Rick's people but in very brutal ways with the barbed wire bat. It's definitely more gruesome than what Rick did even though Rick's body count was much higher. Rick mostly killed Negan's men with an AK-47 and knives to the head when Negan's men were sleeping. 
but with this guilt that Negan has and of how sorry he feels for Maggie, it's just great work from both Lauren Cohen and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I'm very glad we got closure to these moments even though Maggie still can't forgive Negan. And next we get a beautiful dinner celebration with our The Walking Dead family and Rosita is still alive and hasn't turned yet because luckily a single bite doesn't turn you fast. I think it takes about a day and a half to turn so it's good to spend your time with your family while you still can till it's time to go. And of course Negan was not invited to the dinner party of course because you know reasons of course from the past. But Daryl actually looks out the window at Negan and actually nods his head like a thank you of course most likely for all the hard work that he's actually done and he's pretty much redeemed himself. So I think Daryl is actually thanking him for that. Father Gabriel sits down with Rosita and Rosita whispers into Father Gabriel's ear by telling him she was bitten. And the look on his face is just really really heartbreaking. I feel very sorry for Father Gabriel losing Rosita. And we also got Judith looking over at Rosita looking suspicious and she knows something isn't good. Rosita decided to keep it a secret until this next part where she lays down and our surviving family comes over to say their goodbyes. Father Gabriel does this amazing heartfelt rest in peace prayer for Rosita and I couldn't help but really tear up during this part. I'm glad Rosita is getting this peaceful death and not getting devoured by walkers. Eugene says his last goodbye to Rosita and Eugene tells Rosita that he wouldn't have been the man today if it wasn't for her. These two have been best friends since probably the beginning of the apocalypse and this farewell is probably gonna stick with me for the rest of my life. Rosita passes away after she closes her eyes and Eugene cries and this actually made me crack. Next thing we get is a big time skip with a memorial with Rosita, Luke and Jules on it and Eugene is putting flowers down by it. And the time skip says, one year later. Also Eugene and Max have their own child named Rosie which is named after Rosita. And King Ezekiel ends up being the new governor of the commonwealth and Mercer ends up being a lieutenant governor. Daryl ends up saying goodbye to Judith, RJ and Carol to go find Rick and Michonne. Daryl ends up having this beautiful ride off into the distance and the end. We also got a surprisingly epic epilogue to the final episode with Rick and Michonne in the last 5 minutes. Michonne still hasn't found Rick yet, but she will never stop looking. Michonne also has this really awesome looking armor on and she has a horse covered in armor and it's so badass. We also get to see Rick around the timeline of when the Whisper War was happening in Season 10 and Rick nearly almost made it home but the CRM caught Rick escaping. We also got to see that phone that Michonne found with the carving of Michonne and Judith on it that Rick made and he threw it onto that boat Michonne found it on in Season 10. And that's the true end to the Walking Dead Mothership main television series. We will pick up this story in 2023 with three new The Walking Dead spin-offs. These last 12 years of The Walking Dead has been the best journey of my life for a TV series. I'm so glad they brought back Rick Grimes and Michonne for these final 5 minutes. It's like the icing and cherry on top for the episode. I'm gonna give this episode a solid 10 out of 10. And with this extra 5 minutes of seeing Rick Grimes and stuff and Michonne, we all literally thought that we would only see like maybe about a 1 minute uh, at the very most, maybe 30 seconds of Rick Grimes, but like 5 minutes of an epilogue, hell, 11 out of 10. But that's it for my The Walking Dead series finale review. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel for more of The Walking Dead content and video games such as Dying Light and other open world video games and ding that bell icon really hard so I can always stay within fast reach of your fingertips when new uploads arrive. Zonfected Gaming 349 over and out. Right now.